doesn't matter to me who makes the decision so long as it's the just one and it's rooted in facts and fairness and nothing else. Joining us now to discuss this is former federal prosecutor, former counsel to the Senate Judiciary Committee, and former United States Attorney for the great state of Utah, Brett Tolman. All right, Mr. United States Attorney, I, I mean, somebody's got to make the decision on, on whether or not the government took only what they could take, right? So who, who are the possible decision makers on what was seized during the execution of a warrant? Well, Trey, thanks for having me on. Uh, it's always great to talk to you. And, and this case presents so many complex and, and interesting you know, twists and turns, things we've never really seen seen before. As, as you indicated, I can't think of a case in 25 years in the criminal justice system where a special master was appointed, a criminal case, that is. Um, you know, but it, at its heart, it's an effort in transparency. And I think this judge is trying to do that. And that's something that I think the nation is screaming for, because the transparency wasn't there when they executed the warrant, when they secured the warrant, when they went through Mar-a-Lago. And the transparency that I think we're all looking for is what were they doing when they were in there? Why did they get there to begin with? And did they follow the parameters of that search warrant? And we still have many questions on, on each of those issues. All right, Brett, you and I are both old DOJ people. Um, it was the best job I ever had. I assume you probably yep. feel the same yep. way. But, but sometimes material was taken that you're not entitled to. So it seems to me the choice is we either take the word of the DOJ taint team that we've given it all back, or you have a referee that says, well, I want to look at it and make sure. I, I don't know what's controversial about that, but, but the media makes it seem like she's beholden to President Trump because she made this ruling. Yeah, it's, it's uh, exasperating to, to actually listen to the left, you know, scream and whine about a, a judge that, you know, made, made a call based on what was presented to her. And I think did so erring on the side of having that transparency. You and I both know that agents, they get, you know, very aggressive in those searches and they're looking for anything and everything that, that may fall within the parameters of that search warrant. This was a very broad warrant. And it's it's unusual. You and I can sit here and say, hey, you know, there used to be a time when you really took the word of the DOJ because they had very, you know, honest and effective folks that would serve on a on a taint team, for example. And I think that still applies. But this case doesn't allow for that. This is a unique case. And I think we do have to have somebody else, a referee that looks at it and says, OK, I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm not connected or beholden to the Department of Justice. I'm not connected or beholden to Donald Trump. And I see here are the issues, here are the documents that need to be returned. And here are the ones that, de that seem to fit within the parameters of the search warrant. All right, Brett, I'm going to have you back as we go through uh, talking about what should be our lofty expectations of the department. I think one of the reasons she did this <laughs> is, is she's tired of the leaks. Uh, and a special yeah. master is less likely to leak uh, than, than some members of the department. But I got to have you back for that. Thank you for joining us on a Sunday night. Thank you for your service to our country. Thanks, Trey. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.